coming to you live on the Government Access Channel from Mario Bagnoni Chambers in beautiful downtown Erie. It's the Taxpayers Hotline Show with your host, Kaz Kwiatkowski and John Steiner. Good afternoon, everybody. Two o'clock. Uh, we are on time. Kaz is in the building. He is next door uh, talking to... Uh, the, uh, some of the guys from the zoning and, uh, the, uh, code enforcement. So he is, uh, doing work for the taxpayers today. Give me a call. Uh, the number 870-1284. And, uh, this is the taxpayers hotline on the government channel. Uh, hopefully everybody had a really good 4th of July weekend. Uh, it was pretty, uh, eventful for me. Uh, did a couple parades. Um, I did the uh, Mill Creek Parade, and boy, I tell you, uh, passing out candy and walking on that concrete in 95-degree heat, uh, it definitely, I got some exercise, that's for sure, I needed it, and uh, passed out some candy, and uh, it was very well attended. Um, uh, got to see some of my old friends that I haven't seen in a while out in Mill Creek. And uh, I also did another parade last weekend. Uh, a friend of mine from the governor's office called and said, Hey, John, uh, we need you to come and support the governor and be in the parade on Saturday. And I told her, I said, uh, Well, when did we start a, par- a 4th of July parade in Erie? And she said, No, it's the Gay Pride Parade. I said, oh, okay, um, you know that I am not gay, but, you know, uh, I will consider it. And so I post some things on social media and ask people what they would do. And I was kind of surprised at some of the feedback I got, but I did do it. And it was uh, pretty interesting. There were definitely some interesting folks that were marching. Um, it, it was more of a march instead of a parade. But uh, there was a couple things that surprised me about it. Um, it. There was hardly any visitors that were standing along State Street watching. Um, there was the one thing that really irritated me about it was there was this gentleman who is obviously uh, a right far right wing guy who was following us down State Street and he had this microphone and this speaker and obviously it wasn't uh, it didn't work too well because all he did was scream into it the whole way down State Street and we couldn't understand a word he was saying and all it was was just mumbled screaming all the way down State Street so it was definitely annoying but uh, we made it down there, and uh, it was a good time, and the mayor was down there. And, you know, there was a, you know, Perry Square was, there was a lot of folks down there. And uh, it was a pretty peaceful gathering. So, you know, it was definitely an interesting experience. Um, but the good thing about that one was the city is, you know, we didn't have to walk back to our cars. But because in the Mill Creek Parade, once we got to the end, we had to walk all the way back to our cars. So let me give you some advice. If you're ever in a parade, park your car in the middle. So when you walk to the beginning of it, it's not that far. But more importantly, when you're finally done walking through the parade, you can get to your car quickly. Because, man, it was hot. I was melting. But anyway, there's a lot of good things going on in the city. Uh, somebody give me a call. Kaz, he's busy, so... You know, if you're a normal caller, I looked into, somebody called last week and asked about the emergency frequency for the county that they paid all that money for, just to let you know that I did look into it. And it is a digital system. Um, they, you know, I think Phil Fatika really championed that before he had passed away, and uh, they carried it on, and it is a digital system. So here comes our good friend Kaz. Well, you took me out of my seat. Huh? I don't know what you're doing. You t- you're, you're okay. Yeah. So what's going on back there? A big powwow, or are you guys fixing this? Just my regular uh, liaison meeting. Yeah. Well, at least somebody goes to those, right? 
Well, I decided, <coughs> I decided to implement them. Yeah. How are you doing, though? Pretty good. I was just talking about the parades and stuff and on the 4th of July weekend. and Was it a wild one? Yeah, it was. Um, I went down to uh, that new um, that new floating bar. What's that place called? Uh, Woody's? Woody's. Yeah, I went down to Woody's and checked that out a little bit. It was good. It was It's smaller than what I had thought. Yeah, when I first saw it, it looked small, but I guess, you know, there was a, that one was a tough one because you dealt with a lot of agencies. You had the Coast Guard. You had the... Yeah, right. Everybody's got... got council had to do some unique things because yeah. we've never... we You know, basically, you're giving away, like, water rights and everything. Oh, yeah, because they had a lot of yachts were parked. Well, I mean, eerie yachts. There were a lot of issues involved in getting that off the hand. I can tell you that, well, Nick, Nick Scott announced that when we were at his groundbreaking, he'd, he'd like to do it. Yeah. He'd like to do one. Well, I, I hope he does. Those are the type of things that we need. To Didn't have. the, uh, they kind of did one near the hotel in, in the, in, in, you know, in the, in the inner slip side. The new one? Yeah. Or did they? Well, but you know where they where they parked the Skellywag? That, yeah. What do you call that? The marina or the inner inner harbor? Yeah. They 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 have like a dock there where I think you can dock boats along there. Right. Well, I tell you that you bring up the Skellywaggers, and uh, I was down there. What was it? Friday night. Uh, Rum Runners was busy. The Woodies was busy. The Cove was busy. The Skellywaggers was loaded with people. You know, riding around the bay. Um, the, uh, what's the, uh, the clipper, what's the oh, other? Victoria the Princess. Victoria Princess was packed full of people. I mean, it was happening downtown. I mean, I don't get why people will not step forward and develop that East Slip. I well, mean, there's I, so much potential. There's so much money down there to be there, made. There have been plans and plans and plans. Oh boy. Uh, they, Four letter they, word. Well, the one time, they, I think they had something really booming. And then the we had the recession, the Great Recession. That is right. And that kind of threw a kink into. Uh, there was a there was a plan that McAllister's was going to be. I did talk to someone. They're trying to market it, yeah. and it's just not going anywhere. Right. Uh, there was going to be like a f- four story building there. See what they should do is you know the the the, the beginning of the, or the front where the boat is that McCall you know on yeah. Where the I think that's McAllister's. Building. They should keep keep part of that building for historical preservation. Well, there was a plan. One plan was, I think, to tear it down and put a four story parking ramp mm-hmm. with businesses attached to it. Uh-huh. It was it was a nice plan. Yeah. And then there was other plans to renovate McAllister's. Right. Nothing ever happened. The one piece that they were talking about putting a high rise where Rum Runners was. Right. And that ran into some opposition. Because they were planning on closing it off, right? And so, but then all that went out the window when uh, when the economy hit bad. Right, let me ask you a question, Kaz. I don't know if you know the answer. I think I used to know, but I can't remember. Who owns that property, which would be <clears throat> directly across the slip from Run Runners, where the old grain elevator? You know where the um, both grain the, elevators is? Yeah, you, you know where the um, where the library is. It would be at the end of the yeah, dock. That might be Nick Scott now. Nick Scott owns that too. Well, the only, I, you know, I don't know exactly. You know where the dirt is piled? Yeah. Uh, it's uh, north of that school. Correct. That's you what know, I'm talking about. Yeah. North of the school. Yeah. It's going along towards where the uh, yeah. the boat marina. Yeah, it's uh, direct. Not the boat marina. The, the uh, what do you call it? The boat, boat terminal. terminal. Yeah, that's it's right across. From I think that's next. I mean, that is, I mean, why in God's sake haven't they developed that yet? Well, he, that's his phase. Nick's got like, depending on how you talk to him. Yeah. He's got uh, many phases of that project. Right. The first phase is the one hotel. Right. And then I think there's a parking ramp being configured. Yeah. On the north side. Which we need. And long range, he's looking to hook a bridge over to Hammett. You know, in case right. people want to stay, there's plans for a second hotel. Uh, but then he's got some uh, commercial and retail property configured in there, office buildings. Well, you want to have the mixed use, which is good. And then he's got two components of residential. Now, the one residential would be north of that hotel, 
uh, south of McAllister. Is along the water there? Mm-hmm. That would be good. And then he, your piece you're talking about, mm-hmm. he envisions that being uh, housing. I mean, that faces the sunset every night. I mean, that is just, that was is a fantastic but, location. But Residential. Well, but, you know, Nick's a, Nick is a private businessman. Yeah. He didn't build his hotels with government money. Right. Not entirely. I mean, like, you know, we built those other two hotels on the public right. time. Yeah. So even though he's got some help coming from Harrisburg, a lot of his projects are going to be dependent upon, just like Allentown and everybody else did, uh, different incentives that we can throw into the pot to hurry him up. Right. Well, don't be surprised if the Chris is... You know, the Chris starts coming back, and then uh, I don't know if we'll actually get a Chris because those only come around during election season. Some people say that's a Every bad idea, years. though, because when under one of the present formats, it wouldn't be good for the city. We, we have to look at it, but, uh, like, the Lerta will help. Okay, a lot of people are against the Lerta. Yeah. But my question to them is, if we don't include the Bayfront, right. what is happening down there now? Yeah. Nothing, right? Well, see, it's it's it's. Am a, I right, or you're right? I mean, we haven't had anything for years. But I mean, it, the GF property still sitting there. Yeah. It took Nick twenty years. Yeah. To turn a shovel on his property. You know, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to give a Lerta to anybody that wasn't from Erie. To be honest with you, it like Nick Scott. I wouldn't mind giving Nick a Lerta because Nick lives here and spends his money here. You know, listen. In any society, you're going to have your rich and your poor. It's been that way throughout history. It's going to happen. But if the people that are rich, I'd rather have the rich living here. You know, it always upsets me when we give contracts and we uh, do business, fiduciary business, and other businesses with people that don't live in the city. Well, I would be against out of towners. Or Erie County, let's say. I would be against out of towners if they have a track record. If you could say, if you could look and you could say, Okay, here's what they did in Detroit, in Detroit. Here's what they did in Chicago. And, and you got a plan where, you know, they have a game plan where, yeah. you know, they, they got a good business model. Yeah. I'm not against it, but too often in Erie, you know, you get the fly-by nights that come in. Well, see, so you have to be the low, it has to, their bids, it's, I mean, it's not always the, the lowest bid gets the contract. It's the lowest responsible bid. But look at, look and at, people the, don't understand look that. Look at the housing on 14th Street. Uh, by well, Arby's? A little too hurry, right? Yeah. It looked like a good deal, but yeah. what it turned out was they had a nice business model. Yeah. We never got the coffee shop. We never got the apartment. I think one or two apartments ever got filled. Right. And so you look at that, but if you could say that you got this corporation that runs other, other communities and you can actually go there and see that they've been there, I'm not against that, okay? Yeah. Because sometimes you, you can't always do it locally. Oh, I understand but, that. But if you got a guy like Rick Griffin or right. Tom Kennedy or, or Nick Scott, yeah. and they need the incentive, then we gotta we got to do what we have to do. Right. I mean, there's going to be rich people that benefit from tax breaks. I mean, it's first of all, it's it's just the way it is. Uh, look at your insurance. Over the years, we gave them a, a ton of incentives, right? And it's money. And look what they're investing and creating jobs. Go ahead, caller. Hi, guys. Hey. hey. Uh, well, statement, what John was talking about earlier, see if you guys agree with me. But uh, Erie's going to be a very diverse community. I mean, as long as with the, with the gays and the, uh, with the, you know, people from other countries and all mm-hmm. that and other ethnicities. So, I, I mean, at this point, we just have to accept them. I I don't see any problem with them, and most of them are very nice people. So I just think they just want to live and, you know, I, is there, I don't see a problem with them. Why would anybody would want to challenge them? Well, you know, it's amazing when they talk about, well, let's talk about the uh, LGBT community. If, if you really knew, I mean, people for years, we knew who they were. We knew the members of the community, and many of them have, are running great businesses. But in Erie, it's always been kind of a town that was tough to tough to change. But you go in any major city and... It doesn't even register on the radar, right, John? Yeah, I mean, there's... I mean, you know, it's just... Erie has a lot more uh, members of the LGBT community, prominent members of the community that people don't even know about. But even the immigrants. I mean, not all immigrants are bad. I mean, no. we all came from immigrant families. You know, if you look back at the businesses that started now, 
yeah. the Duccini's, the uh, bakeries, all the, you know, the different businesses, uh, the car lots, all of them, they were, they were all immigrant families. You know, I, I, I live in the city and there's, uh, they are I, Middle Eastern. They run a car lot by my house, or not a car lot, uh, a um, repair Protection. shop. And I tell you, they're the busiest place in town. I took my brake. I had to get some, a brakes done over there just to see what kind of work they did and how fast they were. But those guys were on top of it. I could barely understand what they were talking about. <clears throat> but <clears throat> with they, you know, they gave me a fair deal yeah. and my brakes were fixed. I'll learn sign language if I have to. What do you think, <clears throat> sir? What are your feelings? Well, go down the wall. I was down the wall there last weekend, and there are a lot of ethnic people down there. They're very friendly. Yeah, they see a lot of people with the uh, Middle Eastern uh, wear and the African wear. They're very nice people. You can say hi to them, and you know, say how cute their little kid is. And I mean, they're they're, they're nice people. You know, so for some reason, you know, with this president, we are down on immigrants and everything. And you Even know, his wife's an immigrant. Yeah, we've, we've shut. Yeah, and his other wives, they're all immigrants. You know, and, and we shut down our borders. You know, and I, you know, I tell people, I said, look, I said, back when Bush was in office and we started that war over in um, Iraq, we destabilized the entire Middle East. And, I mean, we basically created ISIS, okay? So now ISIS goes into Syria and all these other countries and starts killing people. So all these countries, all, all this is before Trump takes over, yeah. when Obama was in there. Okay, they all, they, we all come to the, okay, we'll take 10,000 refugees. France, you take 10,000. Uh, Germany, you take 20,000. And we'll take 20,000 or whatever. Then Trump comes in and all of a sudden we're not taking anymore. Even though our Britain, our closest allies in the world, we sold them out. I mean, we are, I mean, I don't know what we're doing. It's but. why his father, George I, yeah. didn't, didn't want to, didn't George want to, I, didn't want to conquer that country. Correct. We, remember when, uh, Colin Powell, remember the Colin Powell, Bush, Colin Powell was coming out with this grand report yeah. about all the, uh, weapons of mass destruction. And what they found a couple empty milk jugs in the back of a, of a U-Haul. To a soldier, a bullet is a weapon of mass destruction. Listen, uh, Colin Powell was served. One, he couldn't take it anymore. I have so much respect for Colin Powell. Even though he's a Republican, <coughs> even he was like, I, I basically found some milk jugs, and that's about it. And I, I don't even want to work for this guy anymore, so I'm done. I am not even serving we a let this, Go ahead, sir. Keep talking. I totally agree with you guys. Um, one more thing, this, oh, I was going to say, I think the, the uh, Caucasian Americans, they're feeling threatened right now because we are being outnumbered. You just have to accept it. There's nothing you can do about it. And, and I think that's why they're rising up and they elected this guy to be president who doesn't want to be there. And they, they're just looking for some radical to try to go with them and fight back for some unknown reason. Yeah, this is a different world today, and, you know, if we all play in the sandbox good together, yeah. you know, I, have, you know, I, he, I just think it's going to turn out better for us. A caller, you're 100% right, because a lot of my friends and a lot of people I know, white guys, we they feel threatened. It's like, we, you know, we, you know, everybody can speak out about their heritage, and we support our race, and, you know, we're going to do what we can, and we're going to protest, and we're going to fight. And, you know, and women with the Me Too movement and different things like that. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. And I'm not saying that they don't have validity. But, I mean, white males, if we speak up, we're racist, sexist, uh, pieces of crap. And, you know, so you're absolutely 1,000% correct. And that's why Trump can't do wrong to some people. one question on the local thing. Okay. It, I mean, uh, the, it seems uh, McBride Viaduct is most likely a uh, done deal. It's, it's going to be demolished. Couldn't, I mean, couldn't the city say as, as to offer the east side something to say, hey, now we're going to work on getting you an east side access to the peninsula. I mean, I, I think that would make sense and that would be a good gesture to people on the east side. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can't give you this bridge, but hey, we can work on 
getting a ferry boat, a bridge. I mean, I know a tunnel would be just way too much. Well, Maybe uh, a drawbridge. There's there's something that could be done there. Well, I've been involved with it. It's just, it's just a shame that it, it can't get done. And I'll let you guys comment. I'll let you go. Thanks. And yeah, that was... Uh, you were probably with Dr. Garvey when yeah. he did that. We did a, they did a study. We did a study with the Jefferson. Um, one of the, one of the things that we all agree on and the powers that be that a, some, you, they talked about a, both a tunnel and a bridge. Okay. Now, if you started a bridge. You have to go way back. I you have to start at East Lake Road and go over that way, which is, I mean, Expensive. But didn't the tunnel you had to start the angle too? <clears throat> so <clears throat> what we thought about was starting a tunnel from the um, what's that the slip? What's that called? The East uh, um, Lampy Marina. Or yeah, that? down there. What's that? I mean, the uh, which I know East Avenue Un- Boat Dock. Or? Yeah, or whatever. Underneath the um, channel. Yeah. The North Pier and the South Pier. We we're going to do, but you can't do it. Because it, it'll, it's the, if there's a re, I can't ex- remember why. So what you would have to do is you'd have to take the tunnel and start it further down by the boat or docks. And you would have to slant it in over by, you know, we're, you know, you have, the, you have the pier here. Yeah, I remember there was And then you have the pier on that side. You can't just go under the pier to pier. You have to slant it and go beyond, you know, where the break wall goes towards yeah. the bay. You have to go on that and come around. So what the final price tag was was over twenty-five million dollars. So, and then you have other issues that you have to deal with on the east side because the Presque Isle people are concerned about some of the things that are going on. So, in order for that to even be considered, we have to rejuvenate some things in the city, and then we have to find the money. And by that time, the money's going up now. And you know, milk. Every year's going up. And you just never know who the elect, but he's, I mean, we've been talking about that for, I mean, having a bridge, having a peninsula drive on East Avenue would totally, or even with the Bayfront, you know, in that area. Even a ferry boat would help. A ferry boat would help, but it's, it wouldn't be enough. You need to get cars. Pete, you need cars. They, they already have the water taxi. Well, I mean, they could have a, a ferry boat for cars. They could. But, I mean... You know, it has to make money, though. And that's it. And then you have, by the time you pay insurance, the I mean, gas, you, you the, this, the dock, the de- da- you, da- you have that in the, uh, what do you call it, up in New England. Yeah. You know, we when they go to the, the islands, time. they have a car once. We travel from, um, it's from Vermont to New York, <clears throat> um, the Lake Champlain. We always catch a ferry across because they don't have... It's a car, right? Yeah. You drive your car on... I mean, it's constant. It's 24-7. I mean, 365 a year, they break the ice. During, I mean, that's how they transport to and from. But that's why they, they years ago, they thought they were going to make one go across the Long Point. Yeah. You know, they, they, for the tr- they were going to have one for trucks and one for cars. Yeah. Now, the trucks, that would be like a game saver. Right. You take What would you lop off? Probably. Yeah, I mean, how many trucks? I mean, you'd have to. <laughs> but you'd lop off what? few hundred miles off oh yeah i mean yeah but how many trucks can you fit on one of those compared to 50 cars and three trucks go ahead caller you know kaz and and john let's go back to that sheridan and whatever that other hotel is over Uh, there yeah the uh, courtyard by marriott you know they couldn't they couldn't get anybody and they being casey wells and his group to build a hotel there and they wanted a hotel desperately. So they entered to get that Sheraton insignia. And they gave an outside, and this goes back to what John was talking about. The people that run that, I believe, are in Illinois or Indiana. Yeah, I think I think it's Illinois, I thought, but it's, it's what is it, Evergreen or something? Or? Yeah, and I can't, you know, I, I, I used to know, and I, I could go find out, but... Uh, you know, so the, the management group that runs that, that we built this hotel for, they came and told Casey Wells, well, we need new mattresses, paint job, front door stink, and it's only going to cost you a couple million dollars. And if you don't do that, we'll pull our name. We'll pull our name off the front of that building. Well, that's a contract they signed. I mean, they knew that when they got into it. But, but, but here we got 
outside people. And, 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 and what, ha- what else happens is, is the money that they make gets sucked out of Erie and goes to Illinois. And then the room tax goes to pay off the debt. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's so complicated and convoluted that, that you know, uh, I like what Nick Scott's doing. You'll never hear me say a negative word about Nick. How about Tom Kennedy? Tom Kennedy, I think they're great people. Even Rick Griffith, what he's trying to do. I, and, you know, Rick Griffith, the one, one gripe I got, I think he's sitting on his hands till he finds out if he's got a lure to throw up there. And I don't blame him. That's well, smart business. Being a 14th Street. Yeah, and, and that's why he has money. He's, he can wait a little bit. Well, you know, a lure is a win-win in the long term if, if it turns out good. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a gamble, Rick. It's a gamble. Yeah, but, it is, yeah. yeah. But, you know, you know, just to correct the point you made, somebody did wasn't going to build a hotel. I know who, yeah, they, they were. But yeah. they didn't like what he came up with. Yeah, Because yeah. yeah. this guy was a realist because that was his dime. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it was a courtyard by Marriott, and they wanted a Marriott. Yeah. And and it, it wasn't going to happen because... And, and, you know, Kaz, I was down on 100 Peach Street last week and looking out the back windows overlooking the bay. Yeah. And, I mean, that is beautiful down there the the marinas the hotels i mean it really ju- it's breathtaking i i mean it it is and you know this is why i'm not against developing the bluff like if private business wanted to come in here yeah. and build a uh, a restaurant or some on a top floor like 100 state street can you imagine a restaurant on a top floor oh yeah yeah i mean because it's be- i mean it I mean, really is that that north view is just just beautiful. And yeah. if you could have a rooftop lounge, that'd be even better. But right, you know. But you know, they get all they get all ground up about the height restrictions. And I'm going, yeah. you know, along the waterfront, yeah. like you said, wouldn't it be nice to go down there and uh, uh, just go down there for a meal or a, oh yeah, a beverage at night? Or just the, the problem is, is we have too many uh, non-taxable entities on our most taxable property. Yeah. You're Right, John. I mean, I mean, when Ham, when I was a kid, I grew up down there. Hammett was one building. Yeah, yeah. And then it expanded and expanded, and then they took all that um, Bayfront Bluff property, and then now it's just yeah. you know, off well, the tax roll. The only thing we got is we got like Hundred State Street. You know, that's <laughs> yeah, that's there. But you know, long range, like like below the bluff. And I heard this argument that you know the mayor, well Joe Senate when he was mayor, was adamant that. He didn't want to see the GAF property become an extension of that special legislation, yeah. which allowed the hotels and the parking ramp to be built. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we got to get you, – you're right. We have to – even if it means foregoing a little bit of tax they're, for, they're, for a period of time, yeah. if we can look and say and, – And in the future, we get that tax money for that property yeah. is a must. Yep. The school district, I, Frank Petrunger, he's the president of the school board. There and uh, there's a there's some serious stuff going on over there, yeah. and the business community that I know is going to step forward to help the school district. Because hey, John, nobody's going to move it. We talk about this, Rich, all the time. You're there. Yeah. Nobody's nobody is dying to move into the city. No. And the only way we're going to turn it around is it. They proved it with Rick Filippi that he brought in. In his last one of the, this year that ten years ago, go back ten years. This year we would have made fifteen million more in taxes. Yeah. The problem was that we had an offset of negative property. Yeah. So what our our big goal is going to be in the future, as we give these tax, if, if we do give this LERTA, we got to make sure we keep the other properties developing, yeah. so that you know if if in Five or ten years, we look back and we say it was the right move. And you know what I wish we could get people to come back. You know, I wish we if they're going to do a ten-year lerda for that type of property, maybe do a twelve-year lerda for residential. Well, we have to look at it. You know, I mean, something to where because people feel that the rich and the you know the businessmen are getting all the tax breaks, but I mean, if I mean in in the city only. But here's one they can do, John. So we let's, get dumb people living here again. Let's say you had a house and you were thinking about expanding it. Yeah. Or building a new one. Right. There's no incentive. Why would you come to the city? Right. Right now, everybody, where, where's the realtors tell you to go? To the county. Have you looked in the realtor book? 
Have I recently? Yeah. No. There's nothing in there about the city hardly at all. Oh, no. You know so, why. I mean, to get people to come here, you're going to have to carve slowly. Right. Like one block at a time, start to, yeah. you know. But I, you know, Kaz, somebody told me one time that people aren't moving to Mill Creek to get a change of weather. <laughs> that was my, my uh, fellow member on council. Well, he had a line that said, they didn't move to Mill Creek for the weather. You know, I was. So what he, I know what he meant by that. I did the Mill Creek parade this week, and we were driving around some of the resident, and, and I walked through a lot of uh, yeah. through the residential. And they, they have really nice neighborhoods in Mill Creek. Yeah. There are yeah. really they're um, middle class, not even middle class, but they're lower class neighborhoods. Are like they're clean. Yeah. Uh, their houses are well maintained. Well, th- here's what happened in the city, John. I, 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 this is what I feel. When the city started going down slow, we were not very aggressive. I mean, on any, st- I mean, when people called and complained, yeah. they got nothing out of the city. Would you agree with that, Rick? Oh yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. And, and yeah. so what happened was people take the courts of least resistance. Right. So they say, look, I can move to Mill Creek. I can get lower tax. I don't care. They, you know, I don't care. Okay? I know. All, that's... all I know is I want out of here yeah. because I can't get what I want done. You know, when I go shopping at Giant Eagle out in Harbor Creek, and I do go to Tops in the city, yeah. I'm amazed at all the people that I forgot that have moved outside the city. Yeah. And when you talk to them, it's because there was a frustration level. They're tired of dealing with our bureaucracy, yeah. and nothing happens. Well, you know, they're, every, you know, the crime, um, all the blight, all the shootings. But, you know, the number one <clears throat> reason why people move out of the city or won't move into the city? What's that? Schools. Yeah, but tell, you know what? I I used to buy that perception, okay? That's a perception. And it, it was aided along by a, a district that didn't do anything to correct that, okay? Yeah. And some of the problem was caused by the Commonwealth. When we were allowed to run our show and yeah. we were allowed to organize our classes in different levels, yeah. people felt a confidence level. Right. But when they started with all this mainstreaming and yeah. all these demands from the Commonwealth. No child left behind. And, and all, all that stuff. And people go. Well, unfunded mandates. You know. I want my kid to go to school, and I want my kid to, you know. Whether, no matter what the reason is, Kaz, the perception of the Erie School District is you don't want to send your kid there. Right. I mean. Oh, too, John. I, I do. You know, and, 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 and I'm going to get off after I say this, but I went to uh, the, the JFK Center uh, when they had a little uh, show and tell about uh, uh, Erie refocused and, and the school district was there. Yeah. And we broke into groups. And this 70-year-old guy and another 70-year-old guy, I got broke into a group with six sixth graders, and you need to talk to those. What did they say, John, basically? What, did they, what they said, they, they are bullied. Uh, if you get a bad kid in your classroom, uh, the teacher makes you put your head down on the desk, and, well, they deal with the bad kid. Uh, uh, they, they're, they're scared. I mean, that was all coming from the mouths of the kids that are experiencing it every day, and and I left that meeting. I was I was dumbfounded, you know. And and I, at first I thought, what am I doing sitting there with with six six year old or sixth graders? Well, you remember the argument I had with I won't say I, don't, I won't say over the air. Yeah. Remember, I had the argument with one of our members of the. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. And I argued about the merits of public school, and I said. No one will answer the question about, you know, if the charter schools and the private schools don't take these kids. Yeah, yeah. You know, what does society do with the kids that are? Well, now they're going to shove them down what on on six and liberty. And see, you, you got to come up with a solution. You know, the up solu- for a place for the. I can tell you what the you know, John. You know, I mean, uh, Rick. You know what the problem was when I was on the school board? Yeah. Usually, you could trace. Troubled kids to a troubled home. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. And, and you know, the problem is, you know, warehousing them in a building yeah. is just, you know, sloughing them off. But the real issue is that we get too many kids that are raising themselves, you know. From what I have heard from the school district, somebody is trying to open a charter school at Burton. Oh, at Burton. Okay. 
Okay. And yeah. Uh, yeah. and if that goes through, it's going to cost the taxpayers and well, the budget does. $20 million. Everyone does. Yeah. Yep, $20 million. And guess what? We we can't afford it. If there's stuff going on behind the scenes right now yeah. where the where the private industry is there they, we want they want the city, the the county, the school district, um, the private businessmen, they want Alerta. We need Alerta. And the pri- behind the scenes they are the the private sector is stepping up to help the school district because what's going on behind the scenes and I can't really say right now if it comes to fruition you may have school board members that literally resign from the board. Yeah. I mean, it's bad. Yeah. And if and if a charter school goes in to um, Burton, yeah. that's twenty million more on top of what's going on behind well, the scenes now. With, I was there at the first one. Yeah. And we knew then that we were in trouble. That charter schools are, are. I see their merit, but they are killing our budget. Well, they take the. They take a dollar. Dollar for dollar for the kid. Right and, out of it. I mean, th- and, and then they take all. Then they come and pick the students they want. So you can, you don't have you know so, some charter schools. See, I worked at Perseus House, so I know this firsthand because we charter you schools. What? I worked at Perseus House, yeah. so we have charter school. We run the charter schools. Some of the charter schools are for the kids that just can't cut it. Don't come to school. Uh, caught a charge, you know, in trouble. But, but the, only, the only way you can pass a charter by law. Mm-hmm. Technically, I'm going. I'm going, you guys, so someone can call in. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Is you're, you're supposed to prove something is not being taken care of by the public school. Yeah. There's a need. In other words, in, in the Percy's house said, "Well, we're going to take the kids that seemingly are not being, you know, addressed." What they did was there's they have a couple of them. They there's a school that takes some of the troubled kids, and then there's a charter schools. A lot of them in other cities. Hold on a second, caller, okay? What they do is they pick and choose which the best students they want to take out. Yeah. And then what that does is it pulls them out of the regular schools so that the other kids, you know, they, they're they not, you know, you're around troubled. I mean, it's just, it's not a good scenario. Yeah. And it's costing the taxpayers a fortune, and it could put them under. Go ahead, caller. Uh, I had a call back. Uh, did you, either one of you guys ever been to the Ashtabula Harbor? Ashtabula Harbor. I have not. Okay, you got to go down there. And I've been there a long time there. ago, but not recently. Got to go down there because that it's it's fascinating how that works. I mean, it's yeah, it would be a, it's a smaller scale scale of what we need between the north and south here. But it's I th- I think it's like a, I mean that little area down in Ashtabula down there. It's, it seems to be thriving, and I. I think the drawbridge and there's a little marina back there just has something to do with it because it's a very nice area and the businesses are really going back down there. Which was Ashtabula, basically a dead town probably, what, 20 years ago. Are they making a comeback? Well, I mean, they're trying, they're trying to come back down there. And, yeah, it's just you guys go down, take a little ride and go down, go down Ashtabula Harbor, check it out. Well, we, we, you know, we, I do a lot of traveling for work purposes. We'll take a ride through there and I don't know when, but I'll, I'll bring it up to my partner and we'll take a ride through there. Yeah. I would, I would, I would think, yeah, somebody out from here, you got to check it out just to get some ideas because it's very nice. Maybe I'll take a road trip with you guys. There you go. Oh, okay. Little, that's all I got. Thanks for calling. Little roadie. Yeah. Little roadie trip. A couple. Well, you know, we've been debating this for, <coughs> been going on for more than 20 years. Yeah. You know, the whole development of the waterfront. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, if we, we, as soon as we want to develop, we get hit with that recession. I remember there was a picture of uh, a good friend of mine, Ron Drew, and he was sitting on the bluff. Yeah. And this, I, I can't remember how long ago it was. It, it's got to be about 30 years. Uh-huh. And they were talking about, here's what's coming. Right. Boy, it seems like that, that was ages ago. Yeah. You know, and... We just don't get anything accomplished. It's no, we don't. We have too many, um, too many people with their hands in the cookie jars. But I, you know what I do know, and you guys are starting to work together. It seems like a lot more than what had well, here's the big been done difference. in the past. In the old days, this community always waited for Harrisburg or DC. Okay, let's be truthful. Mm-hmm. For the first time in my life, and I got to say, probably the first time. It might happen years ago when this town was 
you know, way back in the turn of the century. Right. But now you've got private business actually. Well, see, that's you're 100 percent correct. They're actually, in, you know, doing more than lip right. service. They're yeah. putting their they are putting big money, and you know who it is. Yeah, and they're and they're putting their executives behind it. That, Correct. You know, and and it's going to be. I tell people it's going to be painful. And they got, uh, but it's going to be what has to happen. You know, and uh, they hired the uh, urban the Urban Land Institute or whatever to come in and give us a step by step. And they got that Tom Murphy from Pittsburgh, and they got the guy from Cincinnati, who who our uh, EDDC model program is modeled after. So these guys have done it. They know the blueprint of how to remake an American city. You know, we have to we have to have the uh, the fiber optics. We have to turn into a smart city. Stupid cities end up broke. And you know, downtown. We've been stupid long enough. We have to start being a little smart. And, and you know, downtown, we we need to make it like friendlier. Sure, we do. I mean, wouldn't it? I mean, this is corny. Some people would say it's corny, but I've been to a lot of cities, even our size. Where, you know, you can develop your park area. Yeah. You know, and then maybe have a, like a horse ride around it. Yeah, like they do in New York. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, that's, but here's the thing. Um, in my opinion, and this is gonna sound terrible, I mean, I've said a hundred times, we have too many nonprofits and too many low income housing well, around that's downtown. Why think, that's why I said it may be painful what's coming. Yeah. But most towns that have, that have redesigned themselves. Yeah. Uh, and I'll point to one that I was in when my daughter danced there. Yeah. Peoria, they had two towers. Pretty good size. I bet you at least 30 stories high. Yeah. One was a, a high-end residential tower. Right. And the other was what they would call market rate. Yeah. You know, for retirees. But both right. excellent, right? Right. Now, you looked at that, and then you looked at their downtown. They had this one place where they, I call it the, like the one they're putting at the mall, the adult playroom, like Buster and Jerry's or, yeah. you know, where they come in. Yeah. And they had fun things. They they had the mm-hmm. the restaurants and the bars were varied, not all one-sided. Right. And there was life in that community. Right. You know, the hotel was vibrant yet. Uh, I think they called it the, the uh, LaSalle or something. But when you looked at it, and not too far over to one side was their riverfront, and had that developed, and I'm going. This is this is what you need down. You know, when you walked down there, you didn't feel like you were being panhandled or yeah. uh, you know. Well, what, ha- what what's happened in Erie is, you know, a lot of people are talking about gentrification, and you know, the rich pushing the poor out. Um, you know, you, what you need to do is you need to ha- you do need to have a mix, but. In the downtown area, uh, you know, I'm sure that a lot of these high rises and, you know, the Boston store for sure were not put together and developed for Section Eight housing. Well, we we warehoused them because we didn't know what else to do. Correct. And and warehousing, nobody people should have been screaming then when they did it. Yeah. If you watch Buki, they're what I call the Moses of everybody in town here. Mm-hmm. He's the Aristotle. Everybody believes in him. Yeah. What is he saying is in his one passage? Wow. It should be spread through the whole. Oh community. yeah, you should. I mean, and that'll send rumblings of fear. It, you know, it, you know, I, I, I've worked in the nonprofits my whole life. I support them. I donate money. I volunteer, and I can tell you, I, having the city mission, having the mental health association right there, um, having all these nonprofits serving that community, all in one area. So that means that people that use those. Um, Services are all living in the downtown area, yeah. and and you really you, you can't have everything down there. You, you you I mean, with the city mission, I understand, but you can't have them, 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 and them all in the same area because people will reside, uh, people will congregate in the park. You know, yeah. homeless people, and those are different areas where you really you can't have all that because it stagnates the economic development of the whole area. And, 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 and to be truthful, it makes people uh, people really feel like they don't want to be bothered. I, I've heard people come up to me and say, all they wanted to do at night was they took in a show, they took in a ball game, yeah. they took in an event, yeah. uh, and then they went, they had maybe a drink or some food, right. and they just wanted to be, you know, take a nice walk, yeah. 
I, and what happened? It didn't happen. No. So, I mean, you know, yeah. that, that, and I, that's the, what, what happens. That, that, yeah. that plays in your mind the next time. You know, a friend of mine owns a business downtown. And uh, I went outside for a minute, and I was standing outside. And there's a family dollar and a beer dollar, you know, beer can yeah. right across the street. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I was just standing. I was, it was during the middle of the day. And I was, these guys were out front and business women and people were walking by and these guys were calling, cat calling them from across the street. And I'm like, what? And, and, and I couldn't believe what I was, you know what I mean? This is in the middle of the day. These are business women and these guys are standing out front of panhandle, out front of family dollar, holding beer, you know, drinking. And, and then I just seen just the drunks. Walking down. This is there in the daytime. Yeah. The amount of drunken vagrants that I saw in a 45 minute window that I stood outside, I was astonished. And like I said, I grew up three blocks from here. Well, I get I've on, never seen it like that. I, I see it sometimes on Sunday when I come into work the radio show. Yeah. And I'm going, <coughs> now, there are some big cities that have a problem. The last time I was in Chicago, they had it under control. Yeah, they kept. I mean, they it. You had a few, but it was the lid was kept on a little bit. Yeah, uh, I think. You know, you see a lot of businesses with signs, no loitering, no. Yeah, they don't listen. But I tell you, but they but they put them there because, you know, you got in some cases you got daycares there. Yeah, I, what I did notice recently when I was downtown, um, the bike patrols, the cops on bike patrols are out now. Which is good. I mean, when I when I saw this, it was like in early spring, so it's kind of a little chilly to be cruising around. On and we had a beat man too. You need him on the on the foot. Go ahead, caller. Hey, Kaz, I was going to ask you, what is your radio show? What channel is it on? Oh, I, I do a I do a, I'm a co-host on the, the Italian Hour. He's we the, we're at uh, on Gannon. Yeah, he's Kwiatkowski. Yeah, we do it from nine to twelve on a Sunday. <laughs> It's, uh, what is Gannon, 98? Is it 90.5? 90.5, something like that. You, get, even, you, out of the chair, you don't even know what it is? What the we, heck we, kind of a... We're on computer now more. Oh, don't you say, this is Gannon, WRG. We're on, we're on it's all pre recorded you got to know the call letters. It's all pre-recorded, WRG. <laughs> all right. Yeah, 90.5, I'll get you the, I think it's 90.5, and we, you can get it on the computer now, that's why... What time is the show? 9 to 12. Well, you're, you're competing... Right against, right with the, uh, the polka on, um, Sunday morning, and that, that's on the Mercier T8.5. Yeah. That polka on, I think, I think oh. that's 9 to 12. Ooh. Who's on there? Polka? Polka. I didn't think the polka was on that early. I thought. Ever heard that? Yeah, they, that was, uh, Patty Topo in that group, and, uh. That ain't right. The polka versus the Italian hour? That well, ain't we, right. On Gannon, on we got. The Italian. That isn't right, Kaz. You got the east side listening to the polk on the west side listening to the U. Well, we get it, you know, with the, with the computer, we do pretty good because we get calls from, uh, Florida and California. Really? And a couple from Australia. Really? Yeah, people, what, uh, a lot of the commercial stations don't stream like we do. Yeah, that's cool. You keep telling me to come down there, but I, you never, I never hear from you. I have to get this gentleman to come on. You want to come on? Oh, no, I don't know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't. <laughs> Why? What's the matter? But also, I guess you guys are going against, uh, on 1330, there's DJ Dennis, who does the gospel for, God, I don't know, what, three, four hours in the morning. Well, on Gannon Station, we have, uh, it, it starts out late at night, early in the morning, Super Soul, and then there's the, uh, Dorothy Smith is there at the gospel hour, then we come on, and then, uh, uh, right after us is the, uh, Potentia Latina, it's Hispanic-based uh, music. And then after that, I think they do the, there's a church thing for so about an hour. you guys are on Saturday, too? Sunday. It starts, like, you know, late, oh, okay. early Saturday, like, yeah, night. That's because Super Soul Saturday. And then, uh, yeah, he goes on Saturday. Then it it goes into Dorothy Smith and everything. Yeah. And then the polka show comes on after the Church of the Covenant, I think. They have their church hour. I think it would be easier to play polka music, wouldn't you? Because you could just polka is kind of like. I'm not going to get involved, but you're pretty close to right. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you don't want to get the well, polka no, guys I, uh, upset. 
Well, there's so many forms of Italian music. Everybody gets yeah. gets mad if you don't, you know. A polka just like that. Yeah, you, you play a polka and they're happy as hell. Yeah, you got to watch the God, you know. But that's why keeping a balance is, you know, we got, we play Italian rock music, Italian opera. We play the the classics that people think like, you know, some of the entertainers, some people complain because we don't have enough Italian in there. Play a little humor. Yeah, you can't, you know, being a, you can't make everybody happy half the time. But you're welcome to come down, sir. Now, now you're saying what time is, to repeat that. You have polka on at what time? Uh, we, well, we do, 9 to 12 is the Italian show. Yeah. And, I, and I'm trying to think when the polka show goes on. It, uh, used to be, uh, let's see, cause the, the, the person that follows me is on from 12 to 3. Is that polka? No, it's, uh, Hispanic music. Uh-huh. Uh, and then it's a very good show, potentially Latina. Oh, yeah. And uh, right after that, I think they do an hour of church. We all need that. So I think the polka is usually on like four or five o'clock. It starts. Okay, that's that's on the gaming station. Yeah, I'll, I'll get the schedule. If you want, you can look it up on a computer. Go to W E R G under Gannon University. Yeah. And they'll have the schedule on there. And you can either listen on there, or I think it's ninety point five, because we switched our frequency a while back. They 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 had to, you know they got it out a little better. Now I'm now I'm like thinking humming polka music to my head now, and and, and Italian music. I used to do both shows on a Sunday. Oh, my yeah. wife was really mad at me though. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I was never home. I was like, well, she was probably like pretending. Nine to twelve. And <laughs> in those days, we did nine to twelve, and then she was pretending to be mad. Three to six, I think. She's like Kaz, I am so mad at you. When do you got to go back? <laughs> All right, thanks for calling. Yeah, hey, one more call. Oh, okay. Yeah, go ahead. Are you guys familiar with DJ Dennis? DJ who? Uh, I mean, where is he? Dennis. I, I'm not sure of his last name, but he's a black gentleman, older, and he, I think he's been on that thirteen thirty doing gospel for. About 15, 20 years at least. I don't know. Spell it. DJ, spell his last name. Or spell his, D-E-N-N-I-S? Dennis? Well, I think his first name is Dennis. I'm not, I don't know if anybody really knows him who's listening right now could explain who he is, but. Yeah. I can ask the one woman that uh, precedes me. She might know who he is. Yeah. Well, I think, I think he's, yeah, he's probably local radio. He's probably a small legend. I mean, he's been on the radio for years. The nice thing about Sunday again, it's all volunteers and, uh, the community is well represented. We used to have a gentleman, uh, I can't, I'm not allowed to give his name, but he, he called himself the reggae man and he used to play reggae music and he played the part and people would be surprised who he was. But. Was he, did he have dreads? Did he have dreads? Oh, no. Not that far, but. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's one of those weird things that when, uh, you know, trying to, you know, it's, it's a commitment and it, it's, to the people that volunteer, it's 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 really nice. We have a crew where I only have to work twice a month now. You got Perillo, I, does it? Does he still do it? Uh, I'm not sure if he's still doing Gary? it. Gary, Gary is. Yeah, Perillo okay. went out of town, but oh, I uh, think he moved. But we have a we have like three or four different crews we can work with. Yeah, by inner shuffling, so yeah. everybody has a little time off. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, see, that's the thing. We really lost our local radio. I mean, yeah, yeah, my yeah. brother-in-law, he's a big radio guy. and Like Bob FM. He, and all he that. said uh, it's all like canned music now. I'd say... Uh, you don't have any celebrities or... Rocket 101, I mean, they're local, pretty but much. But you don't have a lot of celebrities. They're not even like. Rocket 101, they're 105 now or whatever. You're but, probably... You remember like when we had all the personalities like Randy Michaels or Ron Sedgy or... Frank... Yeah, I mean, even like just the talk radio in the morning, I mean, you get two hours with Scott Bremner, then you get an hour of Barry Bain and that's it. Yeah, and he doesn't even do that much talking. Just like 10 years ago, you had, um... He had two going at it, wasn't it? You had, uh, you had a Jimmy LaCour chick and uh, then, Barry. then Barry Dane and then, uh... Barry Grossman was on there. Then Dino, uh, Dean Pepicello was on. Yeah, that's, that's what I was thinking of. Dean Pepicello used to yeah. be on until like noon. Yeah, and then Dean would do the uh, value line. Remember those where you could buy Wait, two tickets to Barbados, two, two dinners for five dollars? They had two stations going at in those days. Dino, I'll tell you, Dino's a really good elected official in Harbor Creek. Go ahead, caller. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, Dean, I mean, he was, he was a great, I mean, very, very informative, uh, radio host. Yeah. 
Well, he's the voice of the Erie Otters, too, you know. Who is? Dino. He is he? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, th- I think back then they used to all also do Paul Harvey, like, before noon. Yeah. I remember when I was in the Army, that's all he had on during lunch Yeah, was Paul Harvey. Well, you know, Scott Bremner does the show in the morning now. And, you know, I like he takes some of it. He broadcasts live on Facebook. So I'll catch it when I can. And there, there's not much talking. It's more commercials, weather, well, money. Know, that's how the stations make money now. But yeah. I can tell you that when I toured Europe with Scott, uh, when we were on that uh, trip for the airport, He's a very, he's very knowledgeable. It's just that, you know, a lot of the stations, they tell you now, if you listen to Barry, Barry Dane, the same thing, they tell you, you know, they make money by selling commercials. Caller, do you ever listen to the morning show with Scott Bremner on it? Yeah, if, if I get up early enough, I do, but I'm usually at work listening to Barry Dane. Here's I didn't start work at 8 o'clock. Here's what I want you to do. I noticed this the other day. Uh, notice the voices that call this show. And notice the voices that call that show. And tell me how many similar voices you hear. A lot. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, that's true. There's a lot of repeat callers. And, yeah. yeah. Right. I noticed that the other day. I was like, wait. With Mary, that's for sure. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks for calling. you have anything else? Yes. We got to get this guy to come on one of my... He could do the Italian show. I, and now I got the guy from uh, The Godfather. Go, da, 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 dee, 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 da, 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 I'm going to put you on there, you know? <laughs> yeah, you should. Go ahead, caller. Go ahead. Hey, uh, what uh, anything more been looked into about the uh, construction of a replica of Fort Presque Isle or anything down below? You mentioned about several things there, and I don't I haven't heard anything more of that line. The other thing is, uh, during the, uh, I've been watching some several programs and they have a great story about Branson, Missouri, how they built up, uh, with the entertainment world. I'm wondering if anybody booked into something like that for Doc. You know, you know, Doc, I'll tell you this. I, I've used that comment a million times. You ever heard me say it? That if we, if the Commonwealth had been more, uh, in a hurry to get gambling in, yeah. we could have been to Branson, Missouri. Are you kidding me? We'd have had riverboat gambling. I we'd mean, we would have been between three major yeah. cities yeah. if we'd have acted years ago. This yeah. is even before you and I were in college, Doc. Yeah. If they'd have acted way back then, yeah. Erie being like Brant, nobody ever heard of Branson. Branson popped out of nowhere. Yeah. But you know what? We have the location, our greatest liability, which is being between Three yeah, right. cities, yeah, right. which works against us. Which would have been a plus. In this case, oh, yeah. We Can you imagine? Have, we could have riverboat gambling. If you'd had some big corporation like Sands come in and say, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. It's lack of vision. They'd have been coming here, they'd have been coming here to gamble. Hey, we've had, Erie's had a problem with a lack of vision for what decades. What if I blame the decades. Commonwealth and that too, because. Yeah, we've got to start, start blaming ourselves for that. But you know, stuff somebody too. should have pushed for, you know, nobody ever saw the, when Erie was booming as a factory town, yeah. they never saw the other aspect of it. Yeah. I think we can still try to make a play for some of that. Cause, I mean, look at the amphitheater, how it's getting in yeah. popularity. The, the trouble you got now is uh, uh, you look at, you got Cleveland's got the Golden Horseshoe, Buffalo's got... They got two or three. They got two or three. Niagara you got, Falls. Hey, you got Niagara Falls yeah, over Seneca. the border. Salamanca. The Seneca's got a casino and a bingo parlor. And, and then, then you got one. Batavia. Uh, Pittsburgh's got them. Pittsburgh's got a couple. And then the state was talking about putting one, where was it, close to Erie? South of Erie, remember? Her- you Hermitage? know, there's only so much Hermitage, blood. Remember? There's only so much blood you can, like, you can suck out of the community. You know, those uh, casinos, I think, are... Are, they are just money sucking, blood sucking leeches. Cause all they do, you know, people that retire, they go up yeah. there, they blow their pensions, they blow their, their inheritance that they're gonna leave, and you know, if you were gonna leave your kids money, you're gonna leave this money, don't, you know, it just gets sucked out, and it just sucks the economy, in my opinion, and they are just nothing but pariahs. Well, we just at the one minute mark, and yeah. I got a meeting, at, not me, but they're, they're taking over this room at three o'clock. This room? Yep. Oh. Big meeting. Somebody applied for it. Really? Yep. Uh, why don't you also consider this aspect? 
You know, we're in our. I'm looking at our community. We have a great deal of water, land, water world, and also winter wonderland possibilities. You know. I'm going to next next meeting. I'm going to see if I can get John on this. I, I want to talk about something I heard about the water. I want to see if John agrees with me. Oh, uh, we so, saw what we talked about last week. It could be, but okay. yeah, we'll talk about it next week. But hey, we got to hang up, caller. Thanks for calling. Was that Doc? Thanks for yep. calling, Doc. Hey. Thanks. Okay. Yep, we got to get off the air because yeah. this uh, room is being. Uh, Cass, thanks for having me. We see you next week. I think so. Make it quick. Go ahead, caller. One quick comment. Okay. I was listening to a Canadian station where they had a, a call-in show. Guess who called in? John. John. <laughs> John, one thing about John, he, he's he, consistent. He's consistent. All right, thanks for calling. We got to sign out. Thanks for calling. Bye. And with that, uh, Mike. Mike, hit the tune. Hit the tune. I want to hear that new tune. Do, do, do. Kenny Fong is the guy who made it. Hello. This has been Taxpayers Hotline with your host Kaz Kotowski and John Steiner. Thanks for watching. <laughs>